Good afternoon. My name is Charlie Baum, and today I'm going to show you how to calculate present value. This is one of the tools that we're developing in our topic on firms. In order to calculate present value, you first have to understand the intuition behind why this is done. The intuition is that $1,000 today is worth more than $1,000 in one year. This is because $1,000 received today can be invested and grow at the rate of interest so that in one year it will be worth more than $1,000. This is true for any sum of money so that an amount of money uh, today is worth more than that same amount of money to be received in the future because that amount of money today can grow with interest to become a larger amount in the future. If we wanted to find an amount of money in the future that's equivalent to an amount of money today, then we would take that amount of money today and increase it at the rate of interest. For example, suppose that the interest rate is 5%. A thousand dollars today would be worth a thousand and fifty dollars in one year because that thousand dollars could grow at the five percent rate of interest. The result of this is that money received in the future needs to be discounted in order to determine its present value. Money received in the future is discounted because its value today is less than its value in the future. The formula on this slide shows you mathematically how to calculate the present value of a future amount of income. Let's suppose that the future amount of income is received in years into the future. And let's suppose that the variable i is the uh, interest rate. In this formula, in order to get the present value of this future amount of money received in years into the future, you take the amount of money to be received in the future and divide it by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the nth power. Again, i is the interest rate and n is the number of years in the future in which the amount of money will be received. Let's look at an example. Let's suppose that you are going to receive $50,000 payments five times. The first one is going to occur now. The second payment will occur in one year. The third payment will occur in two years. The fourth payment will occur at the end of three years. And the fifth payment will occur at the end of four years. Let's calculate the present value of this stream of five payments. The first payment of $50,000 is received in the present and so its present value is $50,000. There's no discounting because it's received in the present. The second payment of $50,000 is received one year into the future and so we'll divide it by one plus the interest rate raised to the nth power where n equals the number of years into the future in which the payment is received. In this example we're assuming the interest rate is 10 percent. So fifty thousand dollars divided by 1.1 1 .1 is forty five thousand four hundred and fifty four dollars and fifty five cents. Now let's calculate the present value of the third payment. The third fifty dollar fifty thousand dollar payment is received two years from now. So we'll divide it by 1 plus the interest rate squared. The fourth payment of $50,000 is received three years into the future. And so we will divide that $50,000 payment by 1.1 raised to the third power. And then the fifth and final payment of $50,000 is received at the end of four years, four years into the future. So this sum will be, uh, this payment will be divided by 1.1 raised to the fourth power. The second line on this slide shows the results of these calculations and if you add up the five values 
they will total $208,493. This is the present value of these five payments. Four of the five payments are received in the future, but this is the value of those five payments today. Perhaps this raises the question of what interest rate to use, what discount rate to use. Very impatient people will have uh, a, will place a high importance on the present and will place less importance on the future. So that very impatient people will want to discount the future by a relatively large amount and the future will be discounted by a relatively large amount if the discount rate is high. Just the opposite, very patient people place more importance on the future and relatively less importance on the present. Since patient people place more importance on the future, values in the future for them will be discounted by less. To discount future values by less, you'll want to use a lower discount rate or a lower interest rate. The discount rates in the denominator of these equations, so a low interest rate or a low discount rate means a smaller denominator which makes the value of the fraction higher and this shows that future values have a, have greater value in the present. Generally when people consider borrowing and saving money the discount rate that becomes relevant for them is simply the interest rate. Let's look at some additional examples. These are going to be examples for bonds. Let's suppose that a bond is going to uh, pay you $80 in coupon payments at the end of the next two years and then at the end of that second year it will pay you the principal amount of $1,000 back. So you'll get $80 at the end of one year $80 at the end of the second year plus $1,000 back. We want to find the present value of this bond assuming a 10% interest rate or a 10% discount rate. The 10% shows up in the denominator where uh, the variable I typically is in our formula. The first $80 coupon payment is received one year in the future. So we'll divide it by 1.1 raised to the first power. At the end of the second year, we not only get the $80 coupon payment, but we get the $1,000 uh, principal face value of the bond back as well. So the $1,080 payment is made at the end of the second year, and so its present value is $1,080 divided by 1.1 squared. The second line of this arithmetic shows the present value of each payment made at the end of each year and the present value when you add these together is nine hundred and sixty five dollars and twenty nine cents. Now let's look at a second example where we consider a little bit different discount rate. In this example the discount rate is going to be five percent. So here is how the math changes. Instead of using 0.1 for the discount rate we use 0 .5, 0 0.05 for the discount rate. $80 is still received at the end of one year and $1,080 are still received at the end of two years. Now the present value of the bond is $1,055.78. This is a larger present value than in the first example and the reason why is the discount rate is lower. In our second example the discount rate is lower and that makes the present value of these future payments higher. Bonds typically provide coupon payments over an extended period of time, over a period of time of more than two years. The formula at the bottom of this slide shows you the present value of a bond that makes coupon payments for n years into the future, where n might be 10, or n might be 20 years, or n might be 30 years. Each coupon payment is reduced to its present value and in the last period, period N, a coupon payment is received plus the face value of the bond. 
stocks are a little different than bonds because stocks potentially pay dividends perpetually. A bond has a maturity, and at the end of the maturity, the investor gets the face value back. Stocks can pay dividends indefinitely. You might believe that this makes calculating the present value of stock dividend payments more complicated because there's an infinite number of potential periods in which the dividend might be paid. But actually, there is a mathematical shortcut that you can use when a series of future payments, like a dividend, are made indefinitely into the future. The shortcut is to calculate the present value of, the, of an infinite stream of dividend payments. You simply divide the dividend payment by the interest rate. So that if the dividend payment were uh, $5 and the interest rate were 10%, $5 divided by 10% uh, is $200. Now, the, uh, it, it is also, I'm sorry, $5 divided by 0.1 is actually $50. Now, it's also possible to make uh, the present value calculation of a stream of stock dividend payments uh, even more elaborate by allowing the uh, dividends to grow. Let's suppose that we assume that the discount rate is 10% and that the dividend payments will grow 5% per year and that this will happen in, indefinitely into the future. Then the formula is altered as follows. You subtract the growth rate from the discount rate. What you're left with is a rate that is smaller and this makes the present value of these future dividend payments larger. If the dividend payment is $5, the discount rate is 10% and the growth rate is 5%, then you divide $5 by 0.05, and this generates a present value of $100. So when we uh, allow dividends to grow, we subtract that growth rate from the discount rate. That makes the denominator smaller. It makes the overall ratio larger so that the present value of stock uh, price uh, dividends becomes larger when dividends grow. This is all based on a 10% personal interest rate or a 10% discount rate. We could have used a different uh, discount rate uh, as well. 10% is just an example.